Now, I had a deal, and I won't mention the guy's name or even the city he was in. We have to, when we edit this, we need to just put in like little beeps. <laughs> but I call this guy, I'm cold calling, and I'm dialing and smiling, and eventually I get him on the phone and he's like, listen here, you bastard. You call here all the time. Don't you ever call here again. And because I, I've learned the dark art of sales, and I've processed this as a need for more information, I said, and I'm not exaggerating, I said this, my partner was there, my real estate partner, I said, so when you say bastard, what, what, do, you, what do you mean by that? And the guy says, I mean that you call all the time. <laughs> he wasn't ready for it. Yeah. And I said, oh, and I wounded dog. Well, I am so sorry. I, I, you know, I think is we, the reason why we were so persistent following up with you is because we know that your property is vacant and we know there's people out there who want to lease it. There is tenants out there. I know you think I'm a bastard, but we are that, we're that kind of bastard on your, working on your team. We work on your behalf with that little of intensity. We're going to work just as hard to help you lease the property. He's like, all right, you son of a bitch, come on by my office. So I ended up going by the office. I'd be called a son of a bitch and a bastard by the same person. So we now are at his office, and he's like, well, how are you, bastards? Like kind of joking at this point because he realizes that he had cursed at us. Well, we ended up getting this deal. Yeah. And I just thought it was the craziest thing because we've started referring to that guy. as like, if you can sell that guy. And then another story, one of the guys who works up here, uh, Jason Bailey, who, I'm, who I work with and partner with, he called a wrong number and was able to set an appointment with <laughs> Like he called somebody, it's the wrong number. And we all used to always joke that if you could sell a wrong number, you could, you know, he's calling someone, calls the wrong number. And there he's like, I'm sorry, we have the wrong number. And he's like, oh, okay, well, let me ask you, are you still looking for a DJ for your holiday party? And boom, nails it. I just, it's that kind of like yeah. mentality. We get a wrong number. If they tell you no, you just process it as a need for more information. Yeah, I think for me in the sales side, I call it the eight mile rule. For those people that have seen the movie Eight Mile, uh, we've got two aspiring musicians and, and one of them just keeps getting it handed to him. Every time he goes there to do this, he gets it handed to him. And, and finally, at the end of the movie, he says, okay, I know what my competition is gonna say about me. Important thing I just said right there. Know what your competition is gonna say about you. If you can dispel the myths of your competition first before they can say it, oh, boom. they have no words. It's the eight mile rule. Yeah, I know I'm not as good, so what? And then hand the mic over and say, now what do you have to say about me? You already dispelled the myths that they're gonna say. You've handled it and you've overcome those Do you obstacles. recommend the salespeople study their competition? I do. I think you, you study your competition. I think as a salesman, you need to study yourself and you say, where are my weak points? If I were competing against me, and this is something that I do very often. This is something that happens several times a month. I say, where are your weak points? And I'm talking to myself. I'm looking in the mirror. We're back to this crazy talk. Yeah. I'm looking in the mirror. I say, where are your weak points? Are you getting soft here? Are you getting lazy in this area? What is your competition doing to say that they're better than you? And if you can take care of those problems before your competition can say them, they have no words. Now, going, going back to the idea of you can't really give something away if there's not a certain sort of nuance sure. or, or sales skill there. Um, Jerry Vast, the author of Soft Selling in a Hard World, he says, even freebies must be delivered with a certain salesmanship or the receiver does not uh, re perceive the true value of the gift. And I think of a couple doctors who are trying to give away vaccinations I've seen. Sure. They're trying to give away vacc vaccinations to kids. Uh, I think of a lady I worked with years ago who wanted to give away dessert items, or I think of a, another company I work with, they're trying to give away you know, free mo lawn mowing, or free uh, roof painting, or, or, free, or free roof repair, I mean, or free uh, siding painting, or you know, some type of try it before you buy it offer. Sure. And they still can't get a yes, even yeah. when they're giving it away. They're like, hey, we, we will give you free vaccinations. And it's because they can't really sell. Can you explain that a little bit? Uh, the first thing you have to remember, I'm glad you brought up that book because the thing that I pulled away is, what's the value of free? Is there a monetary value to free? Because money equals value, free equals no money, right? right? So what is the value of free? I have a hard time living by the dollar, right? So if I sell a product and all I talk about, my feature benefit for that product is cost, cost, cost. I'm here to tell you today that somebody's gonna come in right behind you and go, my cost is cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. Mm. And the one behind them is, yeah, well mine's less expensive and I'm giving you a discount, discount, discount. If you live by the cost, you're gonna die by the cost. What's the value of free?